Hello everyone and welcome back to another video about my reading life because my reading life is looking pretty good these days. I have just upgraded my Goodreads reading goal from 50 books this year to 80 books this year and I thought that I wanted to do a video about some highlights. I some books I've read recently that I really want to talk about to you. So I have six titles that as I said, I loved and sometimes you just want to share that love. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to just grab the first book from the top, which is this Little Beauty Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keane. I did show it to you in my most recent video in which I showed you some new books I had gotten for myself over summer. I had a pretty good feeling I was going to like it without really knowing, obviously. Turned out I did because this book in some ways, this is the thing that got me intrigued in reading it in the first place. This book in some ways reminds me of East of Eden by John Steinbeck, which you might know is one of my favorite authors and favorite books. So I was intrigued to read this and I do see the similarities, even though this is a totally different story set in a different time. This is about two families who live across from each other on this road and we get to follow the two children who grow up and become friends and one of the households is very happy and family friendly and the other household is pretty cold and hard to live in, hard to read about. But these two children who are very different uh, when it comes to their families they gather and their friendship grows. We then get to follow them as something dramatic happens between these two families and we get to follow these two kids as they grow up and become adults and it's basically a family saga which allows for you to really get to know your characters, really get to love them and I was hooked, I really really was. So ask again if I want to read this book and the answer is yes. If you can hear someone in the background you might have guessed that it is my cat Zeus lying out here wanting to go outside even though he's not used to going outside but sometimes he's in that mood so he's going to be yelling at me and calling for me but just ignore him if you can. The next book in my stack is this one. This is called Garlic and Sapphires by Ruth Rachel, Rachel. So this is non-fiction and it's the <clears throat> memoir of a food critic that alone sold me. I have had my eyes on this book for a year now, I think, and I finally read it. I loved it. I felt like this was a really fresh take on what it's like to be a food critic. Not that I've read a lot about it, but I love those kinds of books that give you access to the backstage life of a career or a person and this one talks about what it's really like to be a food critic in New York City, what it's like to be recognized and how you can deal with that and still do your job. It's funny, it's mind-gabbing, is that a word? It's interesting and also I love food so it was just delicious to read about these dishes that she got to taste and she describes them very vividly. This book comes with no photos, even though you might want those photos to really visualize the food she's eating. She tells us in the beginning that instead of photos, you would like to use recipes because that way you will really get to follow the steps in doing these dishes and you will really get to taste them while you read along and I thought that worked very well. So definitely a very good read which gave me the insight I was looking for and I was not disappointed. There was actually one recipe, one or two recipes in that book that I have tried out myself and really really liked. Then we have this big book which you might have seen on my shelves for years and years. I finally decided to pick it up Basically, it's We Were the Mulvaney's by Joyce Carol Oates. I like Joyce Carol Oates, but I also know I have to be in the mood for her when I read her. Thankfully, I was in the mood for this book, even though I was also a little bit on the fence because every time I picked it up, 
I felt like it was hard work and I really had to, it was slow going and I really had to focus and concentrate. Not that that mattered to me too much, but sometimes you just want to read a relaxing book and this wasn't really that for me, but still I persevered and I'm so happy I did because this turned out to be a five star read for me. It's another one of those books that you know I love about family. This one is, is particularly about the Mulvaney family, which consists of four children, two parents who live alone on this alone, who live on this big farm in America, and they are very popular in this village. They are well, one of the sons is the football player of the town, one of the girls is the cheerleader, they are all very well known and just fabulous. But then something happens which slowly disintegrates their impact on society, they become different people who have to learn to navigate a society and a village in which people look differently at them. And this is very slow going, this disintegration, which I like to call it, I don't know if that's a word, but it was so good. I grew to really love the characters of this book, especially the mother who is called Corinne. She is one of a kind, but I really, really loved her. There were parts in which I felt this is just too much. It's, it's not, I'm not really explaining myself well. I thought that it was a little bit too little to not enough <laughs> to actually keep the story going but this is not very much about the actual act that is happening that this integrates this family it's more about the characters and how they deal with this disaster and how they try and live on and still not and not really acknowledge what has happened while still trying to get their lives going in this new perspective I don't know if I'm making any sense, but I have written quite a long review of this book on Goodreads, so you can check that out if you want to, but definitely a five-star read. And then we have the book that I just knew I had to really talk about on this channel, because it's I think it's my favorite book of this year so far, but a lot of things can happen, so it might not be by the end of the year, you know how it goes, but I'm talking about A Fine Balance by Rohantan Mystery, which I read back in March, April, so I might have already talked about it on this channel, but if I have, it really deserves to be talked about once again, I think, because what an excellent, devastating book about India and about the country trying to gather after the separation from Great Britain and their colonization. It's a fine balance because this book is about the underdogs as well as the overdogs, if that's a word. Basically, we follow four main characters. Two are a, an uncle and his nephew who have basically lost everything in their village. And then they come to the city and they meet this woman who lives alone in an apartment. She is trying to make a living for herself and she's trying really, really hard. And then the last person is this woman's nephew, I think, who comes to the city to educate himself. So obviously he's from better family. He has much, he has a little bit more money and he has better chances at surviving this brutal society that they are living in. And then it's, it focuses on these four characters and it digresses into their stories and it com comes back to the main story and just, just such a fabulous read, which I, even though it's a long book, it's about 600, 600 pages, I just loved every single page of it and that is the sign of a good book really really check out this book if it sounds like something for you i can only recommend it in enough i'm not making sense today but i'm pretty sure you know what i'm talking about at least i hope so and the last two books this one i'm just going to mention briefly because i have already talked about it but this is the chestnut chestnut man Chestnut, Chestnut Man, The Chestnut Man by Søren Sveitstrup. It's a crime book. 
it's out in English as well and back in the days when I talked about it, back some months ago, I didn't have the physical copy which I really wanted to show you because I really like it. As I said, it's a crime story and it's about chestnut men and it's about a murder and detectives and it's your typical kind of crime story but I really liked it. I felt like this was a really good Danish crime novel which I was in the mood for and it was fast paced and it was a delight to read so I quickly wanted to mention it here. I think I gave it about four stars. And then the very last book is a non-fiction book which wasn't a book I was devouring but I learned so much from it so that I'm very thankful to have it on my shelves and to be able to go back to it and reread passages as I want to. This is The Buddy by Bill Bryson. Obviously, this is also the Danish version. And it's a non-fiction book about the buddy. And I love how it says that this is a guide to owners. I think that's what it's, what it's called in English, but a guide to everyone who owns a buddy, which I think is kind of funny. It has sections on everything you can think of. The outside buddy, the hair, the skin, and then the organs, and how you breathe, how you eat, how you exercise, how you grow old, etc. Your sleeping patterns. It has everything. And it was a delight to read, even though it was a non it, it is a non-fiction book, and I do tend to be in the mood for those about a week at a time, and then I get fed up with it and just need to get back to my fiction. And this one took a little bit longer than a week to read, but I really appreciate it in the end to be able to know more about my own body and how it functions. I already knew a lot of what was written in this book, but it was nice to be reminded of how we all function. So I really wanted to highlight this book as well. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and that I could give you some recommendations as to what you might want to read next because that's always the question isn't it what do we want to read next this is what i read i really enjoyed all of these titles and i hope that everyone out there is safe and happy in these crazy days if you have problems not thinking about what's going on in the world these days then maybe pick up one of these books and also let me know what you thought of them because i I always want to know what people think of the books I personally liked myself. That's it. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day everyone. Happy reading.